Hello guys, welcome back to SWS Boxing. Today I'm with Jack Smith, um, Jack Simpson, and he is four four and zero with two big knockouts, and he is a super middleweight. How are you? Not too bad, Sam. Yourself? Yeah, I'm. I'm good. I'm good. Good man. Oh, I forgot. You've got a fight date, haven't you? Twenty second of October. Fingers October. crossed. That's it. Yeah, that's it. That's it. And am I right in saying it's going to be a six rounder? Hopefully, yeah. We're just we're just um, trying to sort opponents at the moment. Um, but yeah, definitely looking to get out to a six rounder for a six rounder, and then uh, push on from there. Yes, and it's at where is it? Bournemouth. Bournemouth O Two Academy. Yes. Have you fought there before? Yeah, so I fought there three three times out of the four. Um, at where was the other one at? That was in Luxembourg. In Luxembourg. So, so why did you fight in Luxembourg? With so I turned over um, <coughs> two thousand and nineteen, just before COVID. Um, so got to fairly quickly, and then COVID came into play. Um, we were really eager to get out uh, our stable. So, with all the restrictions that were going on in this country, the easiest chance of us doing that was, was flying out to Europe. And at the time, there was a show in Luxembourg um, that they managed to get three of us out on. Um, so yeah, that was was quite a quite a fun trip to get out there with some of the lads and and um, start to try and get active again. Is that when you got your first stoppage? Was it? No, that was the second stoppage. Um, but it was a it was just it was a a sweet one. Uh, um, so one for the um, one for the memory bank. Yes. What's been your like the best fight that you've performed in? Um, I haven't. Again, I, I'm quite a novice pro at this stage. Um, in terms of my career, so I've only had four. It's been difficult to get opponents, um, especially in small hall shows. I'm not a big name. I haven't got a big promoter behind me. Um, I just do it because I really, really enjoy it. Um, more for the love of the sport than anything else. Yeah. Um, my debut probably I really enjoyed. That yeah, was really Paul great. Cummings. Was that was Paul Cummings, yeah. He's and, um, very hard. Yeah, I mean, it was just it was more so the atmosphere. I mean, all my amateur bouts were obviously much tougher than my professional bouts thus far. Um, but atmosphere, pro debut, hometown, big buy-in. It was um, yeah, it was a fantastic kind of start. Um, yeah. What gym do you train out of, mate? I don't. So at the moment, I'm not really out of it. We are out of a gym, but we're not. So Kev Thornley, um, he's my coach. So looks after uh, me, uh, Lee Cutler, Joe Pigford, Caleb Johnson and Sam. Um, Sam, um, my mind's gone blank. He's a really good mate of mine. And he's going to kill me for this. <laughs> <laughs> Sammy Davis. Oh, that's it. Um, yeah. Yeah, so um, it's just a good stable us. then. Yeah, so it's it's a good stable. I mean, Lee's um, Lee's been like a childhood mate of mine. Um, we've kind of gone through the circuit together. So started it at Paul ABC. He's with, Southern um, Area. He's Area Champion. That's it. Yeah, Southern Area at the moment. Um, so it was me, Chris Billum Smith, and Lee. Who who boxed at um, Paul ABC? That's where it kind of started. Oh, so were you um, good friends with Chris Billum Smith? Yeah, yeah, he's a good mate of mine. He's um, he's obviously just it's great to see. Just um, he's smashing it at the minute. Yeah, yeah, he's on a um, in a, like a hyper growth period, and he's just he's um off on number levels now, which is fantastic to see because that's um, good. He worked hard for that, and um, it's great to see his hard work paying off. He, he smashed that Chamberlain and he beat McCarthy. Yes, that's right. Yeah, he's... Um, he fights against McCarthy, though, for the, but the second time he just smashed him. Yeah, I mean, with, with Chris, um, he, he's a workhorse. Like, he really, really, in terms of living the life, you, you I've never met anybody to live the life quite like him. Um, so all of his reward is is definitely justified. He he puts the time in, he puts the work in and and he... I think the best thing about Chris is his improvements. Like every single fight, he improves. Um, and yeah, I mean, you go six years ago, you never ever would have thought he's going to be where he is now, and it's deserved. It's really, really well deserved. 
What about Joe Pigford? Is he what ten and zero? No, Pigford's twenty and zero with nineteen knockouts. Oh yes, sorry. That's all right. Yeah, yeah. You're thinking of Lee. Oh, oh yes, but Lee's lost. No, I think Lee. Lee's eleven wins, one defeat. That's it. Um, he lost to Brad Ray, but otherwise, um, it wasn't his night that night. It wasn't his night, and and do you know Brad is. Pushing that, that on for was, titles, Brad. Yeah, I, I'm, and not just pushing on for titles. Brad, Brad's an exceptional boxer, and, and so is Lee, genuinely. And um, they both took that fight early. Lee Lee is a, a super welterweight and um, obviously got the call. He's first. middleweight, um, Ray. Brad Ray Brad. middle, that's it. And um, Lee's super welter. And there is a size <laughs> difference there, but again... Fair play Lee, to Lee, Lee for taking yeah. it. Yeah, and, and, and he was televised, so a bit of a yeah. bonus as well. Yeah, that's it. And I think credit to Lee because he, a lot of boxers out there want to protect everything and they don't want to take the risks and they don't want to take the fights. And Lee, Lee will genuinely, probably to his detriment, fight anybody if, if um, he, he wants to prove himself he, on the big stage. He, he's going to be at English level British very soon. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he's a very good boxer. He's a very good boxer. And he's a very clever boxer as well. Um, he's a good guy as well. Yeah, 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 that's it. What I was your it. amateur record then, mate? Um, Without getting my card out, I don't know, but it was about 28. I had about 28 amateur bouts and I won 22-ish. Did um, you get any stoppages? Yeah, I've got a, a few stoppages. Not, not, not. I wasn't a, a big, I'm not a banger. I wasn't a banger as an amateur. Um, but you got uh, two knockouts out of the four, so people are gonna, you know, rate you as a hitter now. Yeah, it's. Um, I think just as I've grown a bit, and I've got kind of. I, I started boxing very late. Um, so I actually only started boxing in 2016. Um, and. Obviously, turned pro in 2019, so I had quite. I had a very, very busy. Definitely, first couple of years as an amateur, I was fighting just when I could, however I could, and wherever it was in the country. Um, and I just want. I just enjoyed it. It was never meant to be anything more than that. I just. It was somewhere to channel. Um, Were you always wanting to be a pro boxer? No, no, not at all. Um, not at all. I think. I I enjoyed it. I loved it. And the amateurs is great for a lot of things. Um, my lifestyle is very busy. Um, and as an amateur, you have to be on it all the time, always ready, um, which was great until you start thinking about having a family. And I work a full time job as well. And actually having set don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm, I, I train all year round. I'm always in the gym. I'm always active. But in terms of like, I, I, I've, all boxers will tell you it, but you, the diet and eating isn't, um, isn't good if you like your food. So for me- Is it hard to like, for example, I don't know, what's your favorite food? I, any meat, give me a steak and I'm, I'm a happy chappy. So I, I eat steak still, um, but yeah, I, I, I'm probably naturally a, pro if I didn't train and I just had a normal life, I'd probably be 85 to 90 kilos. Really? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm just over six foot. And um, I think, um, yeah, I'm probably naturally around that way. And obviously as an amateur, you, you, I was boxing at 75. Um, so, so would you be about what, a cruiser away? Yeah, I re just, probably just under. So yeah, would just you, under. Would you ever like go up to cruise away? <laughs> no. No, I'll get I'll get demolished. Um, I mean they're big boys and they're coming down from. Work. I mean Chris walks around at over hundred kilos, so um, they're big he's, boys. He's and, a tall lad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's uh, six three, six four, so and that's a the thing. Bit taller than you. Yeah, yeah, but with boxers, they all, that's the, that's the thing. You want to be as as big and as powerful as you can be without as tall as you can, because yeah. the reach is key. Exactly. Reach is king. Um, and boxing at range is, is, a, is a good weapon to have. So have you got many people wanting to come to your next fight to support you? Yeah, so it's, it's, it t so I should be headlining this event as long as everything comes through the opponent. So be oh, really that'll be good, mate. First headline, is it? 
Yeah, first headline. Um, so so that'd be fun. Uh, again, local, um, nice time of the year as well. There's not too many other sporting events on, so um, people should be able to come out and support. Um, but yeah, no, really, really looking forward to it. Are you a fan of boxing as well? So when you're not fighting, would you watch? Like, yeah. so are you going to watch? Who do you think would win with Connor Ben and Chris Eubank? Oh, you put me on the spot. I tell you what, um, as a person and as a fighter, I would want Conor Ben. Um, what? Why is that? To I would want him to win. I like Conor as a person. Um, I think that he's uh, I'm, uh, with boxing. For me, it's a, it's a show um, first and foremost, and I've always enjoyed watching beautiful boxing. So the likes of Lomachenko and. Pete, Naz and people with a bit of flair and where they make it look easy and it's fluent and it's what nice. What about to Canelo? Would you like? Do you like love him? him? Love him. Anything like that where it looks it looks natural to them and um. Usyk. Usyk, exactly. Anything like that. But I find Eubank a hell of a fighter and he, yeah. and he really really is. But to watch, it 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 it, it looks a bit unnatural sometimes. He's quite flat footed. Uh, he doesn't he, obviously he's got a problem with his elbow, so he doesn't extend his jab fully and. I mean, he, he's fantastic. Do I think Connor's a better entertainer and and more more fun to watch? Yeah, absolutely. Do I think he can beat Eubank? I think he could beat Eubank, but I think Eubank will win. I do think Eubank will win. Do you think that... I think if Eubank wins, he'll go all the way, but if there's a stoppage, more likely Ben, because we've seen with Eubank, he doesn't really go... F- like, you've seen when he got... Oh, what's he called? Liam Williams, is it? He got him yeah. up and he didn't eat. I think that he should have finished Williams off. Yeah, I, it, it's, it, again, it's a mad one because Liam Williams is like one of my favourite fighters. Yeah, he's um, a good one. He's, he's good. good. He looks good. He's spiteful. Um, Part of a lion as well for getting yeah. up after four knockdowns. Yeah, and he, I think he's just been a bit un, like, just had a bit, been a bit unlucky. I, I, I a difficult one again with with Eubank Liam. I think Liam Williams. I, I don't know the insides and the the ins and out of it. Um, but I think Liam Williams. There was something not right of his way. He, he wasn't right in that fight. Um, that wasn't the true Liam. It, no, it was a bit odd to see. And like when he when he got dropped with the with off the back of the jab, like, I I just think he cut too maybe cut too much weight or there was there's something else going on. But that wasn't he, the Liam that, Williams yeah. that I've I've known. Um, and I and I'm I'm sure he would probably say the same. I'd love to see that rerun because I, I rate him. I really really rate him. I think he's um. But Eubank says if he if he beats um, Connor Ben, then he he wants to finish off Triple G. Yeah, but and again, that's that's clever from Eubank because you're you're taking him at the right time at the end of his career and Triple G I mean, has gone and passed it now. I mean, you saw Canelo schooled him really to be realistic. Yeah. Yeah. Triple G only really came to life in what round nine, would you say? Yeah, 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 yeah I agree. Um, I only gave him two rounds, three rounds, maybe. Yeah. And and again, run it back ten years, it might be a complete different outcome. Because um... yeah, but with with the judges, I don't know what that because apparently, if the judges gave Triple G one more round, it would have been a draw. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it, a joke. Yeah. What are they watching? I don't, I, there's there's a lot of uh, mixed reviews on on that at the moment. So um, I don't try and get too involved with it. But yeah, I agree with you. I think um, across yes. a few few. Uh, fights at the moment there's been some questionable decisions who do, you, who do you think wait so do you spar with like lee cutler and billam smith sometimes not billam smith so billam smith trains with shane mcguigan in oh, london yeah yeah he um, trains yeah so so mainly um just the lads so sammy davis lee cutler and joe isn't, isn't caleb a heavyweight yeah caleb's a heavyweight is he on the same show as you? He's not. He's um. He's just had a hand operation. Um. Oh. So he's out for a little while now. Um. But yeah, he he's had a bit of a bad right hand for a while, so he's just had that sorted. So hopefully he'll be out next year. Hopefully. Yeah. You never know if it all goes to plan. You might get a ten round or eight rounds if you keep moving in the right direction. Yeah. So so the idea is to have the six rounder under my belt. 
Um, and then that would then let, allow me to push on for the southern area. Um, so that, that, that's, that's, that's the middleweight. I think that's William Webber. William Webber's got it at the moment. Yeah. So it was um, uh, Jerome. Jerome. Ah. Oh. Davis, is it? Not Davis. I'm not sure, mate. No, but... Yeah, but he, 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 yeah, Jerome Williams, Jerome Davis, something like that. But he, he had it um, and then vacated. He's pushed on. I think he fought for the English on one of the Sky shows. Um, I think that um, William Webber will probably defend his title one more, like once or twice, and then push on for like an English. Yeah. When you win your area belt, you want to like, defend it maybe once or twice and then like put, move on to like yeah. an English, what, won't you? Is that what you would really kind of do? Yeah, so I, I mean, the, I'm one step at a time. Um, I know, mate. Yeah. I, I know you're not looking past anything. Yeah, you know? um, and um, that would be great. The 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 I'm, I'm, I'm probably, again, to my detriment, I'm not one of these boxers that's going to tell you I'm going to be a world champion, I'm going to beat everyone and I, I do it because I love it. Um, I want to win a Southern area. Once I won the Southern area, I'll, I'll see what else comes up. Um, Are you that, would, that, would be the, Pardon? that would be the dream, yeah, to push on and, and challenge for an English. Um, so what, but, how far do you think you can go? So would you like happily retire if you just won like a British? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, the British is that. Because that's, that's every, a great belt to have. Great fight that's every, every has year. happened over the years and quite recently for that title because that's a great title. Even your area, that that's something yeah. you should be proud of. Any title, yeah, yeah exactly that. And I mean, the British title is, um, I mean, it, in my opinion, that's, that's the best. That's the best belt to have if, if you if you're British and you you you're pushing past the or you're you're overlooking the British title, then I, I think you're in it for the wrong reasons. Um, of that's, course, that's... you would want like you would want to be like world champion because you know you want to go all the way, really, won't you? But but for, uh, for the time yeah. being, you just need to focus on your fights and keep doing it. Yeah. So your exactly. first six rounder. So and then would you have one more six rounder next year, and then like I would say May, June, July, push on for like a southern area. Depends. Yeah, I hope. Yeah. So southern area will be the will be the goal for next year, for two thousand twenty three. Um, you have to have had a six rounder to then to push on to a yeah because you have to yeah because that's what the board of control because I've interviewed a few people and they said they were coming off like three four rounders and they're not allowed to fight for that title because you have to like I don't know really but it's yeah really, no that's confusing. it you've got to progress through that first but, yeah. um so so get the sixth rounder in and then we'll see what comes up um I'm I'm happy to fight as an away fighter I'm happy to fight as a home fighter um as long as that's there and under my belt and it, whatever opportunity presents itself, then we'll look at it um, and, and see who it is at the time and, and make a decision based on that. But um, yeah, 2023, Southern Area, that's the goal. Yeah. Do you, do you think that Tyson Fury is going to fight AJ? Do you think that fight will ever happen? Yeah, I, I, I do. I, I think this is all... Tyson Fury, for he's a very clever man, um, and he's very, very good at mind games. and And I think there's a lot going on. I, I think that fight has to happen. Um, I think, yeah, it, it's a fight that has to happen. I think both parties, being Joshua and Tyson, both know that that fight needs to happen, and and they'd be silly not to not to do it. Who, um, who do you think wins it, mate? I think Fury. Fury for me, Fury is. He he is a special special. Um, uh, what special by knockout? I, uh, wouldn't surprise me. I never ever used to have him down as a um, to stop people, but recently he's he's hitting hard and he's putting his shots together well, and he, he is stopping people. So that wouldn't. I mean, we know Joshua's engine sometimes can be questioned. Like I'm not taking anything away. I mean, from against him. Usyk, that that second fight, he had him on he had him on the ropes a few times, and I I wanted to see more. Attack like when you get someone yeah. on the ropes, you're gonna just you know give him a, give him a bit of a give him a bit of a dig. But he's um it's difficult again, and and, and that's why I don't comment until you're in the ring with someone because 
things look very different to how they're playing out in a ring. And uh, Usyk, again, is very, very clever in the way he he's always doing something. He's either taking his head off the line or he's fainting. He's using his feet very well. He's always doing something. Um, so as much as people say he should have done this, he should have done that, and, until you're in there, and I certainly wouldn't want to be in there with with Joshua standing over me. Um, but but there was something, there was a reason why Joshua wasn't. So so I, I will not comment unless I've been in that situation. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, 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 from the outsider point of view, I can see um, see why a lot of people think that. So your manager is with um, Steve Bendel. No, so I've I've left. Um, I've just signed. So Kev, who's my coach, now manages me as well. So he he he's done his manager's license this year. So he's taken me on. So he's a coach and manager. So so, so is he your promoter? Yeah. So Steve's the promoter. Oh, that's what I. That's what's the difference with a manager and a promoter? So, so effectively, Steve puts the shows on. So Steve's a promoter, so he promotes a show. Um, and then a manager is the person that deals with all your affairs. He's the one that normally, not all the time, but a lot of the time will be involved with the matchmaking uh, or speak to matchmakers to arrange matchmaking to make sure that... Um, but Steve affairs. will like try and help you as well yeah so St steve steve will definitely help he, he again he's a local local guy and he, he's helped all of us um without steve shows we we wouldn't be boxing down here and he's, and he's doing well isn't he St steve was a very very good boxer um very good boxer and um he lives that life and I think when you can't box anymore you want to carry on a career so so Steve set up down here when no one was doing shows in Bournemouth uh certainly prof professional boxing shows um and Steve kind of put Bournemouth's boxing on the map a bit and st started it back up and and he's kind of built it to what it is at the moment and I mean we've just had obviously Sky down doing the Sky Boxer show on the beach and that was for Chris and Chris Billum used to work in Steve's gym start starting out and and he's really helped a lot of people down here, which he probably doesn't get as much credit for as he as he's due. What's your dream venue to fight at? I would love I'm I'm a simple man. I would love to box in York Hall. Um I think everyone wants to box it. Um been there quite a few times. It's a it's a good venue, mate. Great yeah, venue. And and for again, for a British boxer, it's one of those things you want to tick off your li list. So yeah, I love to box at York Hall, and I love to. I mean, uh, a dream would be at the O2. I think everybody wants to box at the O2 um, for yeah. me. But but plenty of venues, and um, I, th I think York Hall and the O2 for me would be fantastic. Yeah. Well, if you keep working hard, I'm sure you'll fight there soon. I hope so. I hope so. And my final question is: Do you want? Um, oh, I forgot what I was going to say. Um, do you have any advice for someone who wants to be a pro boxer? Uh, yeah, I think um, you've got to make sure you can sell tickets unless, you, unless you've got an exceptionally credible amateur career um, and you can get signed by one of the, the big promoters, i.e. Frank Warren, ben Eddie Hearn, Ben Shalom. Um, otherwise, you need to, you need to sell tickets or at least have um, some good sponsorship because it's um, it's a hard game and people don't talk about that side of it, especially at grassroots level. It's um, it's a hard game and the business side of it is is pretty ruthless. Um, so you've got to be able to sell tickets, and if you can't sell tickets, you need to have a sponsor that's going to cover you. Um, otherwise, I stay out. Go on the road, maybe. Yeah, exactly that, and and that's um that's that's a potential uh, a possibility for a lot of people. The 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 difficulty with that is it, it that can be difficult to get opponents as well. If you're going on the road and you're beating top prospects, then especially yeah, I think, just just be a journeyman. You could be a journeyman. You you can uh, you can be a journeyman. I think um the journeyman at the moment it it died off a bit, but you've got some really good journeymen coming back, and it was certainly a trade where there wasn't there was some very very good journeymen and then we've gone for a bit of a stage where we haven't but i've seen like robbie chapman now um he's smashed he's doing well mate 
But he's what? fight he's fighting on the the same show as you against Morgan Sellerby. Morgan. That's it. Um, again, great journeyman. Like that's that's what you want to see. Um, again, yeah. Paul Cummings has, has become a bit of a household name now. Obviously, Pochi's still around. Pucci, Jordan Granham. He he's a tough yeah. man. He's yeah. a super middleweight, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. You so, never um, know, mate. You might be. You might fight him. Because bring he, it on. He, I've seen him do six rounders, four rounders, and mate, he he doesn't go down. Just no, there. no, he's t- tough, tough bloke. He's tough only bloke. been stopped once out of like a hundred defeats. Yeah, that's brilliant. That's brilliant. That's quality. No, he's good. It's um, a bit like Peter Buckley. Is it, do you know who P- Peter Buckley is? It, r- it rings a bell, but yeah. Look him up. He had about three hundred fights, and I don't think he was ever stopped. He might have been stopped once. Um, but but again, he was a like an unbelievable amateur, and um, I think he won the Midlands title. And then realised that he could make more money and, and do a better job on the road. So he had about 300, 300 professional fights and I don't think he was ever stopped. Or if he was stopped, it was only a handful of times. But yeah, he was um, yeah. he was one of the, the best at being a journeyman. Yeah. <clears throat> and do you want to shout out anyone who's helped you, who's like, who's helped you in your career really at the, like so far? No, I mean, the only, genuinely like it's we're. I'd say it's, it's a, a thank you to Kev, who's my coach. Um, he, he's the one that took me from amateur. He was my amateur coach. Um, spends a lot of time with us. He's also a United fan, to, uh, ah. unfortunately. Um, Who do you so, support, yeah. Mike? I, I don't really support football. I suppose Bournemouth. Um, yeah. But I, I follow it. I just, I, I'm not one of these. I've seen what it's done to my coach and I, I couldn't go down that route. He gets, <laughs> um, it, he's either crying or he's, um, He's very happy, but um, I couldn't deal with that level of depression, I don't think. Yeah, but fair enough, mate. Yeah. Thank, thank you for your time. And no uh, at all. on the 22nd, you get your fifth win, mate. That's it, fifth win. And um, if you're around at all, let us know and I'll, I'll swing you some tickets. Thank you, mate. No I'll let you know soon. Cheers, Sam. Mate, have a good one, buddy. Bye, mate. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye.